guys, I'm Danielle or Danny for short. I'm originally from Guam, born and raised, but my family and I have been living out in Norfolk, Virginia since early 2021. And while we've been obviously enjoying our time out here and gaining new experiences, I am always going to cherish any opportunity I get to rave about where I come from. In one of my previous videos, More Things I Miss About Guam, I had announced that I would be heading back for a lovely visit in 2023. And now that we are in the new year and the time is getting closer, I am just getting so excited to finally head back. Uh, of course, to see family and friends, uh, but also to go back to some of my favorite places, uh, revisit a lot of my favorite sites, and also to gain new experiences while I'm there. So for today's video, I thought it'd be great to share how I am planning for this trip back to Guam. Everything from my flight reservations, to lodging, to personal itinerary, and of course sharing about some of the new things that I've heard about that have you know, come up since the last time I was there. Because I know there is so much more to explore when I go back. Don't forget if you find this video informative or entertaining in any way, then please give it a like and let's get into it. So let's kick it off by first talking about the lovely commute from Virginia to Guam that I am anticipating. It is about, I'd say roughly 18 to 19 hours of travel time. And as far as my flight itinerary goes, I will be traveling from Norfolk to Houston, which is about like three and a half hours. Then from Houston to Honolulu, um, roughly about eight, eight and a half hours, I believe. And then Honolulu finally to Guam, which is another eight hours. Now, side note, this will be the first time that I am traveling solo with a baby. <laughs> and so the nice thing is I had booked my flight with United Airlines and I was able to speak to a customer service rep about, you know, what would be the easiest way to travel with a newborn? Well, in this case, Mila is now about three months. So traveling with an infant. And so they recommended that uh, for the longer flights, uh, you know, like the eight hour plus ones, to get a seat that would be considered uh, in the bulkhead area because those can accommodate a baby bassinet. Now for the shorter flight from Norfolk to Houston, which is about three and a half hours, it may not sound like it's that bad, but carrying an infant on your lap for that long, can I can see it getting tiring. So I really had no problem upgrading my seat to the Economy Plus. So those are a little closer to the front of the plane. Um, they have extra leg room. And it really, it was, I don't know, maybe like 80, 90 bucks for that. I think overall comfort for both me and Mila, that is well worth the investment. Now for lodging and car rental reservations, I am very, very fortunate to have family still on Guam. Um, on top of that, those who are also wanting to help me out during my stay there. So I actually do have a car that's waiting for me there that, you know, it's just a spare that they're letting me borrow. And for a majority of the time, I will be staying at my mom's house. For other times though, because I do want to make sure I kind of like jump around the island and, you know, not just stay in one spot too long. I looked up on Airbnb just for like a couple of nights and one of the first spots that caught my eye was located in Sinahanya and this looked very familiar to me because as I looked more in depth in the this B&B it's very very close to where we used to stay in Sinahanya and so this is like an apartment complex uh, one of the units was open for rent but I wanted to do a little bit more digging because even though that was a very attractive price I thought, why not and why not splurge a little bit while I'm gonna be there and like stay somewhere that is right by the beach, right? So another option that caught my eye was very attractive because even though it was a little pricier, we get the whole unit to ourselves, so there's that privacy. And when I figured out where it was, it's right by my favorite beach, which is Dunkas Beach or the one that is connected to Jimmy D's. And if you've seen any of my previous Guam videos, you'll know exactly how much I rave about Jimmy D's. And that leads us into the next portion as to what places I'm excited to revisit. 
So obviously I cannot go back to Guam without going to Jimmy D's. And not just the bar, but just that beach area in general. As I've said before, it's just one of my favorite places to go. We used to go there almost every Sunday, bring our dog Max. And it was just such a great vibe. There was always a positive crowd there. There's a lot of activities going on too. People playing, you know, beer pong in the water or uh, beersby or, you know, or ultimate frisbee. You have like leagues that go there. Um, and then sometimes they have like a DJ set up at the bar. So that's just, it's just always, always a great time there. And the bonus of course is that so many people bring their dogs. So it's basically like doggy beach. The next spot on the list that I am excited to visit is Two Lovers Point. And this is very sentimental to me because this is where my husband and I got married. So there obviously will be a lot of memories, you know, there, but of course this will be the first time I can take our baby, even though she won't remember, you know, of <laughs> being there. At least I can capture some photos of her being in the spot where, hey, this is where mom and dad got married. And if you've never been to Two Lovers Point, it is just a gorgeous view. I want to say if you wanted to buy a ticket to go up to the, you know, the main lookout, I think it was just two or three dollars. So it's, it's not bad at all, but it is just a breathtaking view. I can't stress that enough. Just overlooking the ocean, it's so blue, and then looking at the cliffside. Yeah, it's definitely something I recommend putting on your bucket list if you're visiting Guam. Now, of course, because I was born and raised on Guam, I've lived there a majority of my life, I had also worked a select few jobs there and gained a lot of great experiences and a lot of great friendships. So I'm definitely looking forward to reconnecting with a lot of those people. So first on that list is Simply Food. So Simply Food is located in Aganya Heights and it is a vegan vegetarian grocery store as well as a lunch counter. And I had worked there probably for a good year before we left in 2021. Uh, but during the short time that I did work there, I there was just this really great family feeling among my coworkers and my bosses. And obviously working a job where you don't feel like it's a job is, is such a highlight of your day. On top of that, the food they serve is so good. And even for me not being vegetarian, like I could see myself converting because their food is so good, but they have awesome daily specials. I wonder if they still have the same ones. I, I really loved their Monday Chamorro plates, their Wednesday Indian special, um, the soups. I love the soups that they make there and their baked goods. I have to say my favorite baked good at Simply Food is the zucchini muffin. It would be the zucchini muffin and then the whole wheat cinnamon rolls. But I know for a fact, once I go back to say hi to everybody, I'm probably going to snag about six of those zucchini muffins just to last me the week until I make another trip back there. The other spot that I used to work at that I can't wait to revisit is, of course, Horse and Cow, which is located in Tumuning. Horse and Cow is a restaurant slash bar, and I was the bartender there for about four years. Yeah, so, you know, if I was there for that long, you can only guess that I loved it so much. But that was just one of those places where, again, you didn't really feel like you were working because your customers were great, your coworkers were, you know, awesome to hang out with at the same time. And even on top of that, after I would get off my shift, I would like hang back for two hours just because it was such a good vibe all the time. And I want to say even when we were off, like on the weekends, we would still come back. My friends and I would go back to where I worked just to hang out there because it was such a great time. But yeah. Definitely want to hit up their wing night if they still have it, fingers crossed. And I know that I'm going to be on Guam during Super Bowl and Horse and Cow always holds an awesome Super Bowl party. So if they are doing one this year, I plan to attend for sure. Now, another thing I can't wait to partake in is the Wednesday nights at Chamorro Village located in Ganya. The Chamorro Village hosts an awesome night market every Wednesday. And that just features a lot of awesome food and craftsmanship, culture and entertainment. And it's just really one of those things that you have to go like at least once if whenever you're visiting Guam. So even though, yes, I've been there before it, you know, during COVID time, it was like shut down. So I, I really do have to indulge when I go back. Um, yeah, you can bet I'm going to have a huge fiesta plate with me there. 
And while we're on the subject of awesome food, one of my favorite restaurants that I can't wait to go back to is Capriciosa. This is a Japanese and Italian fusion style cuisine. And my favorite dish there is definitely the spicy tomato penne. And for people who know me well enough, I love cooking my own food. However, this dish I have not been able to recreate yet. So why not just indulge while I'm on vacation, right? And of course, one thing I absolutely can't wait to do again is go snorkeling. The waters on Guam, gosh, what can I even say about it? I mean, it's just so inviting, so blue, so vibrant. And the fact that you can see to the bottom, I, I feel like that makes me more comfortable uh, swimming in open water. But on top of that, the water is nice and warm. <laughs> I know that's gonna sound very pampered, but we, we've gone to a couple of beaches out here in Norfolk and the water is cold, you know, that's like the Atlantic Ocean, so <laughs> very different. But um, yeah, I cannot wait to go like snorkeling again, just because the marine life too, like anything you see, you're always bound to see something so cool when you go snorkeling. So a lot of my favorite spots include Fish Eye and Gab Gab. Gab Gab is located on the naval base. But anytime that we've gone snorkeling, you're always bound to see something really cool like turtles or jellyfish or black tip sharks. Yeah, I never thought I would ever say that I'd be excited to see a black tip shark, but apparently it's not something you would, you know, just see every day. So when you do see one, it's it's really cool. Now, along with revisiting some of my favorite spots, I also am hoping to gain some new experiences or they're just other things that I'm hoping to partake in while I am there on Guam. One of the things I hope I can do is attend a village fiesta. It's been a while since I've been to one, not just because I haven't been on Guam, but even when I was, um, I don't know, there was just something that I, you know, it kind of fell off my radar for a bit, but it's such a great experience to have. The food, okay, I know you're gonna hear me say food a lot, but the food is just incredible because when you have one large village fiesta, you're featuring dishes from so many different families. So multiple different recipes throughout generations being passed down. And it is just that family feeling, that very you know welcoming community that Guam provides, that's always something that like, who, who could even not enjoy that? Along with the awesome food and friendly people, I can't wait to watch people do the cha-cha. You know, the dance floor is also another big part of the entertainment. Some of like the songs that will always kind of run through my mind that always play at fiestas, like, uh, gosh, what a honey baby, my honey baby. <laughs> That's what, um, under the boardwalk. Oh, I love you like a mango. <laughs> that, that has to be one of my favorites. Yeah, it's just one of those awesome things that brings you back to your childhood. Cause we used to go to fiestas at least like once a month. So, Fingers crossed, I don't know if there are any happening in February or if there will be any going on while we're there. And if not, then I maybe I might have to coax my mom into throwing one for us just to get the experience. Another thing that I'm really hoping to experience while I am visiting Guam is attending the Valley of the Laddie tour. This is something that I had kind of seen on, you know, some of my friends' pages, my families who have attended the tour, and I never got to go. So this time around, for sure, I, I, I'm putting it on the list, I'm putting it on our itinerary. From what I've been told, it's basically a cultural tour, and it also includes an adventure park or a cultural center, and so not only does it look like, from what I've seen on the website, not only does it look like a very, you know, scenic experience, but also a very, you know, just culturally educational one. And for me, you know, wanting to kind of stay close to my roots, I think that'd be a great thing to take part in. And it's down south in Telefofo, so it'll be nice to kind of get a change of scenery also and go to a little bit more of like the quieter part of the island. Something else I'm also looking forward to I kind of have to provide a little brief backstory, but before we left Guam, I got big into rhythmic cycling. It just became part of my exercise regimen, and it was something that my sister and I, you know, liked doing together a lot. 
Then after we left Guam, she spent the next, you know, several months training and eventually becoming an instructor. So not only was I missing the the exercise itself, but then I was missing the experience of her being a teacher, being an instructor. So the good news is she is opening her own studio. Yes, her own rhythmic cycling studio. And I believe it will be open by the time we make it to Guam. So fingers crossed that I can take one of her classes or a few more than just one. But uh, yeah, that's something I am definitely excited, not only because I like rhythmic cycling, but just to go and you know support my sister doing what she loves. I can't wait to experience that. If you want to check them out, their studio is called Made Wild. You can find them on Instagram. Lastly, something else I am super excited to do while we're on Guam is make my new dance video. If you haven't seen the first video I made dancing around Guam, I'll leave a link above and below that you can check it out. But I thought, why not? Because I never know how often I will be going back to Guam. Why not commemorate it by making another dance video, something I love doing already. But this time, what I'm super excited about is rather than just featuring myself dancing around Guam, I am going to be pulling in a lot of my dance colleagues, people who I used to dance with before or previous students, um, family, friends. So that one's going to be a lot of fun because I get to incorporate a lot of close relationships I have on the island. Not only will this be so awesome to feature the talent among the dance community on Guam, but I will also be able to showcase the beauty of Guam all over again. So we'll be picking a couple of our favorite sites and scenes around the island and shooting our choreography there. I definitely can't wait to visit Guam again and more so I can't wait to refresh a lot of my Guam material and continue showing you guys why it's such an awesome place to call home. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you did, then please give it a like. And of course, if you want to check out all my other videos exploring around Guam or also to catch all the new stuff I post about the island, especially after this trip, then consider subscribing to the channel so you can check those out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!